Welcome to the Nightly Rant. I'm Mike. And I'm Toria. This is the show where we talk about the awful things that have happened in our day, the awesome things that have happened in our day, and all the things in between. Thanks for listening, and we truly hope you enjoy. Do you miss the glory days of talk radio where the hosts knew their stuff and were not spreading fake stories? What would it be like if those same hosts could speak their mind and not have to answer to management for it? I have just the thing for you. Spencer Hughes Podcast and Adventures is the new show from Spencer Hughes, formerly of Fox News Radio and a host of other places. For as little as $1 a month, you can have access to Spencer again. His insights will make you think, and his humor will make you laugh. This is your chance to help a man build his dream and support his family. Head over to patreon.com forward slash Spencer Hughes today and subscribe to one of the several levels you can choose from. You will not be disappointed in the content you are going to begin receiving. Patreon.com forward slash Spencer Hughes. Adventurous content the way radio used to be. So let's talk about a really important but often misguided topic of indoctrination. Okay. So, do you get what I mean by the word indoctrination? No, you're going to have to explain yourself. So, like the issue where the government... The reason, I mean, have you ever wondered why the government wants control over the education system? Not really. I haven't given it a lot of thought. It's because the government gets to put forth a dialogue to the students, and they get to put a narrative out there, and they get to teach the kids that that's how things went down, even if they didn't. Okay. So, like, like we watched that TV show about Waco. Uh Uh-huh. And... It tried to present like a kind of a neutral, um, unbiased position. But what it did was it showed that the government spun the story so that they didn't look so bad. And that's what I'm talking about, about indoctrination. Like people say the government doesn't have a lot to say in our life and they don't have a lot of control and we only they only get what we give them and i completely disagree with that i think that the government indoctrinates us from a young age and i mean between my first child and my fourth child the changes in what they're told about the same topic are I don't know, alarming. Fair enough. And the only answer that I can come up to about why they're different and alarming is that the agenda has changed a little bit. And so they want people to think in a little bit different manner. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. And... Here's the thing. If you teach children, like, all right, this is how powerful indoctrination is. They realized that they wanted to, they were were trying to fight this war on drugs. And they realized that, yeah, we can go after the drug dealers all day long, but unless we stop the drug users from using drugs, the drug dealers are going to keep being, keep doing what they're doing. We've talked about this before about how. They have a difficult time because if they go after the low-level drug dealer, it doesn't have any effect because they'll just replace them with another low-level drug dealer. Right. But by the same token, if they take the guy off at the top, there's a whole host of people lined up to take over and be the person at the top. Right. So their thought process at some point in the U.S. anyway was we're going to teach the kids not to do drugs. We're going to teach them how dangerous drugs are. So, 
that's like an indoctrination of the kids. And people have said like, well, why do we want to legalize marijuana after teaching all these kids that drugs are so awful? And I actually read somebody say, well, then the government will just start leaving marijuana out of the drug discussion. But they won't because alcohol is part of the drug discussion and it's legal. But with alcohol, all they really warn you against is drinking to the point where you get drunk and then driving. So they won't take marijuana out. They'll move it and group it with alcohol. But they'll make it. They'll make it appear more acceptable. Okay. And right now, they're busily making it sound like it's an evil, nasty, rotten drug. Well, they've been doing it for 35 years. That's what I'm talking about right now, today. Okay. And people are saying, how can you change and say that marijuana should be something that's legal when for years you've been teaching kids that it's an awful, evil thing? And the answer was, we'll just indoctrinate them in a different way. And that's concerning to me when I think it through because children are put through school and they're taught different things that eh, aren't necessarily the truth. Okay. And then that puts a group of people out there who become voters who vote in the manner in which they were indoctrinated. And this is why people say, oh, well, the government just represents what the people want. I mean, I think that's a naive comment to make. Like the guy tonight that we talked to that said, you know, oh, well, you're giving the government too much power. It's society that decides these things. But then but then, out of the next sentence, he says, well, the government would tell you that um, because we have these anti-discrimination laws, that's why we're not the worst, most racist country in the world. But yet I don't think the rest of the world would agree with that. I think they would still think we're the most racist country in the world. I don't think it's the most racist country in the world, but I'd say top five. And I think you're nitpicking on a point that kind of steps on what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that this guy saying that they're going to use that argument and other countries are going to say, well, it didn't work. You're still racist. Yep, pretty much. And how can he say that the government doesn't have that kind of power? Because he's an idiot. I don't think he's an idiot. I just don't understand how you can make that claim and say, but then at the same time say you don't want society figuring those things out. Well, he didn't seem to want to do much except yell and scream at a room full of people. I wasn't talking about the guy that was yelling and screaming. I was talking about about, we agreed we weren't talking about that guy. I'll edit that out. I'm talking about the guy that came to dinner afterwards. Got it. And he was arguing with me that, oh, you give the government too much power. You know, it's not the government that decides those things. It's society that decides those things. I mean, after all, we elected these people in. Well, let me ask you a question. Let's say you elect a person to be a congressman. And this has happened. And they change parties. Mm -hmm. And now they have a different ideology than they had when they got elected. Do they still represent the people who voted for them? I don't know. Do they? Well, they they have to. That's their job. They're still They're the congressman over this area, right? But now they're voting differently. So, so then no. Tell me again. You're how, saying no congressman right. actually represents you. Who well, tell them. me how. Tell me how society is controlling that situation by their vote. They're not exactly, and that's mostly because people have no fucking idea what they're voting for. It comes down to indoctrination. They're they're teaching people to think a certain way and act a certain way. So that they can, like like she said, it's like the first day at work. My gosh, it reminded me of what I went through back in February. You you go for this whole entire day. They are spending, for some employees, $700 for that day. To have them sit there and listen to how they should dress when they come to work. Things they're allowed to wear, things they're not allowed to wear. Um... But why shouldn't an employer be able to mandate those things? That isn't what we're talking about. We're talking talking about about how the employer indoctrinates them. And I'm pointing... But why shouldn't they be able to? Okay, since I haven't made my point yet, why don't you tell me what my point is? No, I won't. Sorry for asking a question. Because you don't know my point, point and you haven't let me finish, and maybe your question will be answered. 
Because my point has nothing to do with what the company has a right or no right to do. My point is that it's the same thing that the government does. They tell you how you should act. They tell you what you should wear. They tell you when you should wear it. Come on. What is the big argument going on in New York City? Whether women should be able to walk around topless because men get to walk around topless. Okay. But the government says, no, that's illegal. Women can't bear their breasts. But men can. Heaven why? forbid some man somewhere gets a direction. But why? Why is it okay for a man to wear it, be topless and a woman not? And that's the point. It's because that's what the government has taught you over the years. Let's face it. In some societies, nudity is not looked upon as a bad thing. From the very beginning, when you're born, till the day you die, you're hearing about, you're hearing and seeing nudity. So you accept it. And that's the point. Society sets up these, quote, norms, and then they force everybody to conform to those norms through the indoctrination. Whether or not the business should be allowed to have an indoctrination process isn't the point. The point is businesses do that because they say to themselves, we want to control the narrative that comes from this company. We want to control our image. We want to control what our marketing says. We want to control what our salespeople say. And they're not allowed to say this. And they're not allowed to say that. And they must say this. Come on. Look at Pepsi. Perfect example. You want to sell Pepsi at your restaurant? As soon as someone says, I'd like a Coke, they're required by contract to say, is Pepsi okay? Okay. Why do you think they do that? I don't know. Because they want the consumer to know that they're buying Pepsi, not Coke. They want to correct the, oh, you're not getting a Coke, you're getting a Pepsi. Because they want people to think Pepsi is better than Coke. And that's why we chose Pepsi. And they have a right to make people who, as a, as a condition of being able to sell Pepsi... They have a right to ask for exclusivity. That's why most places don't have Pepsi and Coke. They have one or the other. Okay. Just like a business has a right to dictate how their employees dress, what they say, etc. But the point is that it's interesting to me that a company wants to protect its image, so they indoctrinate the employees. They tell them how to dress. They tell them how to talk. They tell them what they can say. They tell them what time they have to come to work and what time they have to leave work. They tell them what they have to do if they want a day off. They tell them how far in advance they have to ask for the day off. It's all indoctrination. Same thing with the government. You know, for a long, long time, the thought that two men could get married was the most disgusting idea on the planet. It still is for a lot of people. It still is for a lot of people, but it's become a more higher percentage agree with it than disagree with it. And it's because the indoctrination changed. It was gay people have their rights. Gay people should be allowed to do that. Yeah, they should be. But the reason for the change in society is because the government changed what they indoctrinated you with. And yes, there's always going to be people who sit left when it should be right or right when it should be left. Or the opposite of, you You know, you think this way, they think that way, 180 degrees the opposite. That's always going to happen. And it isn't about whether people have the right to do it because I believe people have the right to do whatever. It's about... Why should they have the power, why should the government be indoctrinating people? Shouldn't they leave it up to society as a whole to decide what happens with people? Why should any part of society get to decide what I do with my life? Shouldn't I be the one who decides what I do with my life? Well, society decided that it wasn't okay to murder people. Okay. That's why there's laws against murder. What if one day society decided it was okay to murder people? Then it would be the stupid movie The Purge. But it would be okay, right? I guess. Because that's what society decided. Sure. But it would never be okay now because the government has already decided that it's the law. And that's kind of my point, is that when you... How to put it? When you make things laws and regulations, you tie everybody's hands. 
And in the future, there may be situations that arise that you didn't think of. And society might say, oh, now that we hear this, our opinion has changed. But just because their opinion changed doesn't mean the law is ever going to change. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a bad thing. My guess is it's bad more often than it's good. Like, like the whole abortion debate. I think that social issues like that go through cycles. I mean, we've talked about how society evolves and changes. And an issue like abortion, back when the Roe v. Wade thing went through... Society as a whole was like, you know, more free and believed, you know, okay, a woman should be able to decide what to do with her body and we don't know when life actually begins and we still don't, um, at least from a scientific perspective. And so therefore, abortion is going to be okay. We're allowing it. Okay. And what if down the road, and it seems to be changing in that direction... More and more people felt abortion wasn't okay. Then wouldn't it be possible that eventually the rule, the law would change? Yes. But maybe it wouldn't change. Maybe the Supreme Court would never rule against that ruling. So now you've got a conflict. You've got a whole horde of people that think that that law is archaic and should be changed. And then you have the whole situation where you can't change it because it's, quote, the law, end quote. So why that power? Why should the government have that kind of power? Why not just let the people decide what's right and what's wrong? And let society manage itself. Most people think that's the way that it is. But is it? That's probably part of the problem. But is it? You're too dumb to know what the fuck is Because I don't think it is. I mean, even like... It's kind of what I was trying to say. Even like here in our apartment building. I mean, if enough people got pissed off at things that were going on, and they went to the management, eventually the management would change the rules. You think so? Because I don't. They would have to. What would happen if everybody moved out? So there's They'd six people, people to move in. So there's six people that do what they do do things a certain way, and sixty that don't like it that way. And the management refuses to change it. So all sixty people move out and publicize that this is why we're moving out. And that word gets out. Maybe. Problem solved. Maybe they change. Problem solved. I mean, by My your... My guess is more likely they'd get fired and a new property management company would take over. Okay, but by and your take... Would repeat it by, by what seemed to be your original take on it, that they wouldn't do anything, well, now it would seem to indicate that the free market system would never work. And it's proven to work. I mean, we've talked about how socialism doesn't work. So a free market capitalist society... Is the only real proven system that actually works. No, but then the system works. But then people talk about how oh well then a small percentage of people get all of the money. Well, I think like that guy today was talking about how five tech companies make up for half of the money in that industry. Well, that's because the government helps them get there. They subsidize things and they give them tax breaks for doing this and for doing that. And only the big guy can take advantage of that. Do you think our business could get a tax break for building a building with a child care center in it? We can't afford that. Okay. Yet Google can get that. Yep. And that's the problem. Is we give certain groups all of the power. And it's like I was telling the guy and he couldn't argue. The judge made the point, you know, I can I can make a ruling on the homeless issue today, but you're not going to like how it's going to be in five years from now, and you're not going to be able to be agile and make, take a different direction when you need to, because it's going to be, quote, the law, because I made the ruling. Instead, what he said is, I want to see you guys collaborate and work together, and because you, as a group, can be more agile about how you handle the problem. You you go down this road and five years from now you see a problem with it. All right, we'll adjust. Right. But you can't do that if it's if it's written in stone. You know where that saying comes from? Written in stone? No. Moses and the Ten Commandments. 
Because they were written in stone. Oh, joy. More biblical references. Is what it is. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> so that's that's why the whole indoctrination thing is scary to me. I mean, I think... I, I do think that businesses should be allowed to make decisions that make the most sense for the business. And in the end, you know, example, a year and some months ago, we decided to start our own business. Yep. If after six months we were making no money and hadn't made any money, we'd be going out and getting work. Right. At a job. Doing whatever. But that would mean we would be paying the pen penalty of our bad decision to start a business. Right. And I think that's what it comes down to. Even a business. If it if it chooses to go into a certain area of work, a line of work, like a line of business, and that line of business is not profitable, they're going to pay the price for their mistake. And they're either going to have to evolve and change or they're going to croak and go out of business. Makes sense. And I think the same is with society. Society is either going to evolve and change how they handle problems or it's going to fall apart and become a disaster. And unfortunately in this country... Fall apart and become a disaster is more likely at this point. We're headed there. We're headed there. Because nobody we're, we're can agree. There. Nobody can agree. And like... People make statements about things that are just flat out false. I mean, look at, look at, just look at people in general. They've already fallen down and become not okay. Right. And, and they make statements that are just flat out false as though they're fact. I saw an interesting yeah, video or whatever mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. And the caption was me trying to ex express my opinion in the year 2018. And it was just a dude standing there, and then all of a sudden he got shot by like 10,000 arrows. <laughs> well, that's that mob mentality that that guy was talking about. Yep. And it's, and like we were talking about in the ride, some of these issues are very, 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 very difficult to figure out. And I really think that the reason they're so difficult to figure out is because we're trying to find, and you just said the, the, a very true statement. We're trying to figure out the perfect system, and there is no such thing as the perfect system. There is no system that's utopian and perfect. No, and there are different systems that work for different people. And I think you have to go with the ebb and flow over time, like the whole abortion issue. Over time, if society decided abortion wasn't okay for the majority of society, then abortion wouldn't be okay. Because eventually the pendulum's going to swing the other way. I think, I think there's a pendulum in life, and it swings back and forth. And depending on which side it's on at the time, that's how people feel. Okay, but at no point should somebody else be mandating somebody else is allowed to get an abortion or not get an abortion. I don't society disagree. In general, I don't disagree with you, but if ninety nine out of a hundred people felt that they should be able to, then that's the direction it's going to end up going. And that's the point of the pendulum. It swings back and forth, and it gets to one extreme, then it goes to the other extreme. And that's what we always do in life: is we get to the furthest left extreme, and then we go all the way to the furthest right extreme, and then back to the furthest left extreme, and then the furthest right extreme, and. All of that's okay as long as there's not government mandates forcing you to make that decision. Because then, like you just said, if society as a whole decided that abortions shouldn't be uh, something that you just have readily available, they'd make it more difficult to get an abortion. But it wouldn't eliminate the ability to get an abortion. Right. Because you would have your personal freedom to do what you need to do. Now, I believe the mo the strongest argument in favor of just leaving it as is and kind of, I don't know, punting on the issue is that, and this is proven, it happened, when it's illegal, when anything is illegal, people go to the criminals to help them. Because there's always going to be a certain percentage of criminals who are willing to jump in and lend a hand with any given problem that is faced. Right. 
And this has led to people who aren't doctors performing abortions and killing women. Right. And this is what I was getting at. Society as a whole needs to have the ability to adjust and pivot based on the well-being of its community. And that's the thing. They, society will look out for other people if you give them the chance. Laws and regulations lock us in to a path that we sort of end up... It becomes a, you must do this. And it must be this way. And I don't know. I don't think... I don't think everything is black and white like that. And I don't think everything is that easy that you can just say it has to be this way. Because it's not going to work that way always and forever. Yeah. Like one of the problems you guys had in Canada was a shortage of doctors because healthcare in general became like controlled by the government. And they decided how much people made. And... By doing that, you stifle the ability of a doctor to make more money. And if you're going to stifle the ability... Why become a doctor when you could become an engineer and your income limit is sky's the limit? Why do it? I mean, yes, there's going to be those people that they're... I don't know, what's the word? They're passionate, they're passionate about health care or helping other people. But then there's going to be people who are doing it because of the money... And those people who do it because of the money are going to bail on the idea of doing it because they're not going to make enough So money. why not just put an expiry date on all laws? Yeah, but even then, or what if you put a 50-year expiry come date? come up for renewal. You wouldn't go with 50 years. It would be way sooner than that. Come up for renewal like your registration does on your car. Have everybody vote on it again to make sure it's still what they want. How about we just don't have laws that control our personal freedoms? But you, we've established multiple times that you still have to have some laws or you're an anarchist. Yes, because you have to have... You, some would argue that you don't have to have this. I think you do. You have to have the ability... Like we've talked about in our building. She puts rules in place like you can only smoke in the parking area and buy the barbecue. That's because... Most people don't have to go to the parking area or the barbecue pit. But when the guy down the hall is standing outside smoking a cigarette, he happens to be courteous about it. But a lot of people wouldn't be. And if they're just standing there blowing a puff of smoke out there, we don't smoke. We would have to walk through that all the time. So there are rules for how to behave in the public areas of our building. Okay, and those, those are, are fair. The laws I was talking about. Those are well, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Those are fair. I agree with you. You do need that because you need some authority figure. In this case, it's the government to be able to step in and go. You're violating that person's rights. You need to stop that. Like speed limits in school zones. Mm-hmm. It's for safety. Right. But if people are starting to think that our law is becoming outdated. Maybe it should have an expiry date where you well, it should really be changed. decide if yeah, it that should be law changed. should still be the same. Well, it's same. like the zoning law here in Cyprus, you know, that was put together, whoa, uh, 36 years ago, almost 40 years ago. Most of the people that wanted that to be a law are dead. Are dead. Their children are the one, ones enforcing it right now. It's ridiculous. Yep. And that is the problem with indoctrination because it forces us down a path that isn't sustainable in the long run. Fair enough. I mean... Well, anything else? No. Guess that means goodnight, everyone. Hasta la bye-bye. Hi, everyone. This is Mike. And I truly hope you enjoyed this show. You're able to subscribe to this show on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher so as to never miss an episode. If, by chance, you did miss an episode here or there, you can catch up on all shows, past and present, by heading over to yogispodcastnetwork.com forward slash TNR show. Thanks for listening.